Hi, Kara, and welcome to Underground Video Network Behind the Counter. Uh, to my right is Richard. Hey. How's it going? Good, good. Uh, Busy. Busy. You've been really busy. We've got uh, you've got some great news to touch upon. Yeah, I want to thank everybody. We had a chance to get some of our video footage on the local on demand in the Columbus in the Northwest Ohio area. We had coverage from last year's space. That was a 2009. Uh, Peanut did a great job on that. We mm -hmm. did a lot of interviews with a bunch of indie guys. This was on for several weeks, but it's not available now. But we'd like to thank everybody who did tune in and watch that because everybody that watched it really helped us by hopefully. We're looking at trying to get another production on the air on local on demand. Right. It it showed the desire for us to be on demand. I think it's going to work. I just mm -hmm. uh, coming soon. We can't really say too much right now because it's still up in the air what exactly we're going to produce. But it'll probably be some kind of interviews, just like what we do. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, who wouldn't want to see this in 52 inch screen plasma high definition? <laughs> so you know, tune in for that. Um, summer's upon us, and one of the things that everybody has to look forward to in the summertime is the big summer blockbuster movies. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, Iron Man 2 pretty much, you know, I'm that guy, I wore the shirt. Uh, Iron Man 2 pretty much got a jump on the summer yeah, movies. Yeah, it came out, like, right away. Yeah, um, and it, yeah. it pretty much set the tone. It really did. It set the tone for the summer movie blockbuster. It, it came out of the gate hard with action, comedy, good story, good special effects, and it pretty much said... It, it pretty much said to everything else coming out after that, there you go. Right. Top that. And I think I think a lot of the summer movies coming out are going to have a hard time. Yeah, this whole summer has really been off. Yeah. Except for maybe that, really. Yeah. And they, like I said, they came out of the gate. They came out of the gate hard. And they just, it's like they just kick back their feet and, you know, just watching everybody else, you know, either succeed or crash and burn. Yeah, because I went for the midnight showing. Yeah. Because I had a chance to see Iron Man before it. <laughs> Oh, yeah. That was really interesting, seeing both of them back-to-back -back. Mm -hmm. and seeing Cap's shield on the big screen. That was amazing, yeah. <laughs> and just the, the, the blasé way they handled Cap's shield, too. That I was mean, such a in Tony... the first one. Oh, in the first they one. They actually had you the got DVD, to see it. yes. Yeah. Because that wasn't in the original release. No. Huh. So that was interesting. Yeah. But a couple movies to talk about coming up here in the summer movie blockbuster season. Just uh, released. Just released was uh, Jonah Hex, based on DC comic books' as a character of the same name. Yeah. Uh, just came out. We actually haven't gotten a chance. By the time you see this, gotten no, a chance to watch it's it yet. It's out now. So we're asking you, our audience, mm -hmm. hey, stop by our Facebook page. If you're not already um, a fan of our page, go ahead, become a fan, and leave comments. We want to hear what you thought of this movie. To be honest with you, we want to know if we want to spend the eight bucks to watch it. I mean, I, lo <laughs> I love Josh. I really do. I've grown up watching Josh Brolin, you know, since Goonies, and knowing what I know about Jonah Hex in the sh in the comic books. Physically, he pulled it off. I think they, they cast like it. He looks like him. It sounds like him. But and it's set in the Wild West. It is set in the Wild West. For those No future. Yeah, for those people who are familiar with the Jonah Hex story, they kept it old school. They kept the heart. They kept the soul. They, they knew what they were going after. There's no future. Yeah. Da, blah. Uh, but I think another big one coming out that for comic book fans, they're really looking forward to. For those that don't watch com read comic books, very often it's going to slide under your radar, but we're talking about uh, Scott Pilgrim Saves the World. It's an indie book out mm -hmm. from uh, Oni Press. Oni Press. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, written and uh, drawn by uh, Brian Lee O'Malley. Um, I just read this. Mm -hmm. I just read this last week because I really wanted to get ready for this because I think this is going to be something else. There's seven volumes out, so it's going to be a long read, but I want to hurry up and get it done before the movie comes out, yeah. which is August the 13th. August so 13th. you've got a few days to catch up. Go to your local stores, pick this up, and read this. It's kind of hard for me because this isn't my cup of tea, really. Yeah. This ain't your superhero. No. This is a little different. This is an indie scene. Basically, it's almost like a love story in a way. Right. The first, at least the first novel was, um, with a lot of craziness. And the art is sort of your, not quite manga, but something else. Right. It's like that, that meld of uh, Japanese manga and American stylization. It was a good. It was a good hybrid of the two. Yeah. Um, it's not one. I'm gonna be completely honest with you. It's not one. I looked at it more after I heard about the movie. I, I'd seen it on the shelves for years, flipped through it, it looks cute. After seeing the stuff that I've seen for the movie, which a lot of the clips are online right now, you can go ahead and check them out. Right. I picked up the book, flipped through it, and it's, with no offense to the book, I, for those people out there who are getting ready to throw daggers at me who love and cherish the book, I'm sorry, it just, it wasn't my cup of tea. Maybe after the movie comes out, 
you know, I'll give it more of a chance. I would like to be able to say that I'm that guy that gave it a chance, but for right now, I'm I'm honestly the fanboy. I'm looking more forward to the movie. The movie looks spectacular. The previews I've seen for it, oh, the yeah. cast alone. They look like them. They look like them. And I'm, another thing I'll be completely honest with is uh, I was almost Michael Sarah'd out. <laughs> I just, you know, my quotient for Michael Sarah had already been filled. Sans got pilgrims, and but after seeing. Uh, the previews and seeing what he's going to be doing and who all is going to be in it. I think it's going to be one that's going to be worth a check. Oh, I think it will be. Yeah. It's just that hyper-stylized, you know. I think it's a good way to end up the summer, though. Yeah. This, this is it's going to be good. It's going to yeah. be good. Talk, well, one of the, the next things we wanted to talk about, uh, we haven't talked about uh, video games for a while. and There's a new release. There's a new release. I've played in it, and it's, uh, it's called Red Dead Redemption. I'm sure a lot of people have already heard about it right now. It's uh, produced by Rockstar Games, the same people who made Grand Theft Auto, and I'm here to tell you, it is the it is the same um, atmosphere, not the same location, definitely not, because Red Dead Redemption is set in the Old West, but it still has that same look, that gritty feel, that open world play. It is really an amazing game. Um, for anybody who's heard people talk about it, uh, just the scope of it. I mean, when they say you're in the Wild West. You are in the Wild West. Uh, you can just take days going through the desert, hunting, uh, finding people who need help. Oh, wow. It's, it's really, and the graphics are stupendous. Uh, at one point while I was playing the game, it started to rain. And it was real subtle and slow at first, and you don't think, well, oh, wow, it's raining. But then, you know, the storm came in very slowly, real true to life. Then all of a sudden, I'm in the middle of a torrential downpour. The game is completely dark. I'm wandering around the desert, pitch black. Wow. And the only time I can see anything is when lightning strikes. And the shadowing and the, the texturing and the mapping was spectacular. And I'm just, I, I spent 15 minutes of this game just sitting in the desert, looking around in a thunderstorm going, <laughs> this is awesome. But no, it, it's, it's a very great game. There's a lot to it. Um, it's one of the few games, I'm not a big uh, multiplayer person. I just never had that MMO sensibility to me. The multiplayer online capability of Red Dead Redemption is 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 fun. You get to form a posse. Oh, wow. You know, you get to pick your missions. You know, me and these guys are going to go after you know said criminal, and we're going to do that. There's different challenges. I actually really I didn't even enjoy the multiplayer for Ghostbusters, if that says anything. It it left a bad taste in my mouth. It rubbed me the wrong way. I was almost completely done with multiplayer, and I. I gave Red Dead Redemption a chance and it worked. It, it, it pulled me back in. Oh, cool. But yeah, it's a great world, great story for your single player campaign. Very well written. It, it plays like a movie. It really does play like a movie. Oh, wow. Yeah. And it, it's just enough where it doesn't follow so much a singularity line of storytelling. You can still hop from here to here and do mm -hmm. these missions, but the general theme is still under, under the, the surface. Oh, cool. So yeah. That's, I haven't played it yet. Sorry. I recommend. I'm still I really kind of blown did. away. I saw some stuff on X Play about it and stuff, and I really want to play this, but I just hadn't had a chance. It has a lot of replay value. That is one I would I would recommend buying that one. I really do. Spend the sixty bucks, or if you get to go to a local you know game store, buy it used for fifty four dollars because you know that five dollars you know. But no, I, I it's, it's a buy. I definitely recommend it. It's a buy. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. And now, I want to wrap up a little bit. Um, convention season part one is basically done. Mm -hmm. um, we've gone to a lot of shows this year. I know Mike's gone to a couple. Yep. I went to a lot. Um, I went over to Fort Wayne to Summit City. It was a great show. Can't wait till next year. Had a great time. He had 82 to 83 cr independent creators there. And that one kind of snuck up on us, too. Yes, yes. That came out like nowhere. Um, but have good news Zach invite us next year yep so we'll be over there I mean it's just Fort Wayne for us in Lima here it's just a uh, hop skip and a jump yeah so and then I got a chance to go up to Screaming Tiki Con for the first time and I had a blast up there got to meet the uh, promoters of the show uh, Wolfpack Entertainment they did a lot of video coverage and we're going to have that video coverage on our website cool they said we're allowed to cross promote that and I really want to help them out um, hopefully everything will work out yep so yeah, it's going to be a big summer. Uh, a lot of movies, a lot of games, right. a lot of conventions. We're definitely going to be... And convention season starts up again in August. Right. So if by the end of summer you're watching our show and we're both still, paste, both still pasty white, we'll let you know why.
All right, thanks a lot, and we'll see you soon.